Is President Obama's Cash for Clunkers program actually a lemon? The whole program is just poorly thought out. On Your Side examines how it will work and whether it's really a good deal for you. Sounds pretty ideal, getting up to $4,500 for trading in a gas guzzler and helping the environment. But on your side, investigator Anna Song has learned, as with many government programs, the benefit and the eco-friendliness of the program depends on who you ask. The U.S. government has announced an automotive stimulus program. Dealerships are already using it as a selling tool. The federal government program now called the Car Allowance Rebate System, CARS for short. Recycling yards like this one in Clackamas is where the trade-ins will end up. They're stripped of batteries, tires, and fluid, then smashed, compacted, and sold to other countries as scrap metal for manufacturing. We are the original recyclers. Hank Doan tells me he is relieved the feds are stepping in. Good to see that they're getting involved in, in doing something that actually is going to create demand in the economy right. and create jobs. These recyclers are hoping the program helps them, too. With the downturn in the economy, they went from processing as many as 100 cars a day to half of them daily. To qualify, your car must be drivable and get 18 miles a gallon or less. You must have owned it with registration and insurance papers for the last year, and it must be a 1984 model or newer. To get the rebate, you have to buy a new vehicle that gets at least 22 miles a gallon if it's a car, 15 to 18 miles a gallon for trucks and vans. Oh, and that new car has to cost less than $45,000. This is kind of a lot to work through, a lot of parameters. I know, and that's why, we, that's why we're studying the program thoroughly. It's up to local dealerships to recoup the financial credits from the feds after granting the rebate to the customers up front. The accounting department is a little uh, nervous about the reimbursement program from the federal government, so we need to find out exactly how that's going to work. What's the oversight, though? I mean, what's to stop the dealer down the street from taking a car in and saying they're going to scrap it but not actually doing that? That's a good question. I'm not sure. Because, I mean, you guys can play by the rules, but the guys down the street don't have to. You know? Yeah, well, we're all just... Uh, you know, we just all got to do the right thing. John Charles with the Cascade Policy Institute argues this government program won't help consumers, the economy, or the environment. Case in point, the gold one, his used BMW. With 157,000 miles, which gets roughly 18 miles a gallon and could stay on the road for years. So sending it to be destroyed at this point would be wasting the energy embedded in every part of this car. As in the fossil fuels that went into making it. He also points to something called the rebound effect. Basically studies that show when you get people into higher efficiency cars, they tend to drive more. Think about it. When your office goes from a slow printer to a high-speed printer, do you print more or less? When you go from dial-up internet to high-speed wireless, do you get on the internet more or less? One more thing. Charles insists destroying used cars creates an artificial shortage of them, driving up their prices and hurting those who can't afford to buy new. So it's a regressive effect. On poor people. The potential potholes in a program set to start this week. So is this really a good deal for you? Bear in mind, most cars on the road get more than 18 miles a gallon. So this program really applies to SUVs and trucks. For most that do qualify, they're worth more than the $3,500 to $4,500 rebate. So you've got to do your homework. To get more information about this program, go to the Inside K2 section of KATU.com. I'm Anna Song for K2 News.